Hello, dear students. Welcome back to Bio Vidyalaya. I hope you all are doing very well. And I think you all know that our CSIR NET 2022 exam will be held on September. And I don't know how many of you are going to write this exam uh, this time. Anyway, if you are preparing for this CSIR NET examination, then this video is just for you. Yes. Not only for CSIR exam, but also for any competitive examination. It is very important to practice previous year question papers. So today we are going to start our CSIR net previous year question and answer discussing video series. Before that, you should ensure that you are not going to miss any of the videos on this PVQ series. For that, you should be a subscriber of this channel and also turn your bell icon to all. So, this is the first video of this PYQ series. Here we are going to discuss about some cell biology previous year question. So, let's start. First question, this is the question from CSAR net June 2017. Question is, metachromatic leukodystrophy, MLD, is caused by a deficiency of RL sulfatase A and affect the CNS. MLD is, option A, lysosomal storage disorder, option B, a disease due to dysfunctional mitochondria, option C, caused by loss of myelin sheath. Option D, caused by defect in proteins of the nuclear envelope. For answering this question, you should know that what is MLD and where this RSL sulfatase A is present. Okay. So, I will tell you that MLD is a rare hereditary disease that is, that is due to the accumulation of fats called the sulfatides that is build up in uh, cells particularly in brain, spinal cord and peripheral nerves. Okay. This is due to the deficiency of an enzyme called the RSL sulfatase A that is already given in this question. And this RSL sulfatase A is present in lysosome that is a lysosomal enzyme okay because of that abnormality of this RSL sulfatase A result in the inability of body to break down uh, fats containing sulfate that's why what will happen this sulfatides that will build up in cells especially our nervous system that will cause destruction of our myelin sheet and that will affect our central nervous system. So this is a lysosomal storage disorder because lysosomal storage disease uh, means it is, uh, it is the uh, abnormal buildup of various toxic material due to the result of deficiency of lysosomal enzyme. So, this is uh, the abnormality of the enzyme RSL sulfatase A present in lysosome. That's why it is a lysosomal storage disease. Okay, so the answer is option A. Question number two, which one of the following pairs is not matched correctly? Option A, glycocalis adherence. Option B, fimbre motility. Option C, phyle conjugation. Option D, peptidoglycan cell wall. So here we have to find which pair is not matched correctly. Not matched correctly. So first Option A, glycocalis adherence. This is correct. We know that glycocalis is involved in cell interaction, cell communication and signaling and also in adherence. So, this is correct. Next is fimbre, motility. 
this is not correct here this, you can see that this is a bacteria here fimbre is present and this fimbre is small um, fiber like structure that is helping in uh, attachment of bacteria to surface so it is specialized for attachment not for motility okay so this pair is not correct okay fimbre is for attachment not for motility okay next is pili here you can see that sex bilus and this pili is responsible for bacterial conjugation so this is correct let's imagine that this is donor bacteria and this is recipient bacteria so this donor bacteria will extend pili to the recipient bacteria and then it will form a bridge like structure through this bridge only this uh, dna will transfer to uh, donor to recipient okay so this is uh, involved in conjugation this is correct pair next is peptidoglycan cell wall this is also correct we know that peptidoglycan is present in cell wall of bacteria so cell wall is correct pair so here we have to find which is not matched correct which is not matched correct yes option b so correct answer is option b fimbre motility okay third question the second messenger which opens calcium ion pores in endoplasmic reticulum and plasma membrane is option a diacylglycerol option b phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate option c cyclic amb and option d inositol triphosphate in this question they are asking that which second messenger is responsible for the opening of calcium ion pores in endoplasmic reticulum and plasma membrane okay and this is the question from uh, cell communication and signaling cell communication and signaling is very important topic from cell biology don't miss that try to study that so here if you know that uh, ip3 dag pathway then you can easily answer this question okay i will uh, quickly tell what is occurring in this ip3 dag pathway in ip3 dag pathway first phospho phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate that means pip2 that will convert to dag and ip3 by the enzyme phospholipase c okay by the enzyme phospholipase c here this pip2 is a membrane bound molecule and this dag is also a membrane bound molecule but this ip3 is soluble ip3 is soluble okay ip3 means in acetol triphosphate so what will happen this ip3 can diffuse through the cytosol and that that can bind to ip3 calcium ip3 gated calcium channels that is present in where endoplasmic reticulum ip3 gated calcium channels that is present in endoplasmic reticulum when this ip3 bind to this um, ip3 gated calcium channels this channel will open and that will release calcium ions to cytoplasm okay this is an overview of ip3 dag pathway while this dag diacylglycerol that will activate 
protein kinase C. Okay. Anyway, I think now you uh, now you can easily tell the answer. So which uh, second messenger is responsible for the opening of calcium ion pores? Yes, it is IP3, inacetyl triphosphate. So the answer is option D. Okay. Here you have to remember that the cyclic AMB is activating protein kinase A. Okay. And this DHE is activating protein kinase C. Okay. So here answer is option D. Inacetol triphosphate IP3. Okay. Fourth question. Following our list of some protein. A, BZL2, B, BZL XL, C, A1, D, bags. Which of the proteins are not anti-apoptotic? Option A, D only. Option B, C only. Option C, A and B only. Option D, B and D only. So here, four protein names are given. From this list, you have to find which is not anti-apoptotic. Okay. So first is BCL2. This is anti-apoptotic protein. Next BCLXL. This is also anti-apoptotic protein. A1. A1 is also anti-apoptotic protein. Bax. Bax is pro apoptotic protein so which is not anti apoptotic yes it is bags let's see the option option a d only so the correct answer is option a d only okay fifth question this is the question from csar net december 2017 during eukaryotic cell division, metaphase to anaphase transition is regulated by degradation of option A, cyclin B1, option B, CDK1, option C, Aurora A kinase, option D, polo like kinase. So, in this question, they are asking that during eukaryotic cell division, metaphase to anaphase transition is regulated by the degradation of which protein? Okay, here options are given. Okay, so this is the question from cell cycle. If you know how the transition of cell cycle from one phase to another phase is controlled, then you can easily answer this question. Okay, we know that there are two phases in cell cycle. Which are that phases? Yes, interphase and M phase. Okay, M Phase and interface. Okay. Interface means preparatory phase and the M, M phase means dividing phase. Okay. So interface means preparatory phase and it is including G1 as G2. Okay. So, the transition of cell cycle from one phase to another is controlled by a protein complex known as CDK and cyclin. Cyclin CDK complex. Okay. And this cyclin is regulatory component and CDK is acting like an enzyme. It is a catalytic unit. Okay, and the cyclins undergo synthesis and degradation in each cycle. There are three cyclin, G1 cyclin, G1 to S cyclin, S cyclin and M cyclin. I will write here. Here, in early G1, first is early G1, which CDK is involved? Yes. CDK4 and CDK6 along with cyclin D. 
okay cyclin d okay next is g1 s transitions then cdk2 along with cyclin e okay then s phase in s phase cdk2 then cdk1 and cyclin is a cyclin a and finally g22 m in g22 m cdk1 along with cyclin b this is very important okay this is very important you have to remember this okay each cyclin will synthesize during that particular stage of cell cycle after that it will break down and that breakdown is very essential for the cell cycle to transit from one uh, phase to next phase okay here they are asking about metaphase to anaphase transition so i will give an overview about that uh, metaphase to anaphase transition we all know that during metaphase what will happen yes um, these chromosomes are aligned at the equatorial phase isn't it chromosomes will align at the equatorial phase my drawings are not good please adjust okay and uh, uh, what will happen during um, anaphase the sister chromatid will separate sister chromatids will separate during anaphase okay so after proper association of all chromosome with the spindle fibers during metaphase what will happen anaphase promoting complex anaphase promoting complex cyclosome that is apc slash c we are representing like that so this anaphase promoting complex will get activate it will get activate that will get complex with cdc 20 or cdh1 okay and um, the main function of this activated anaphase promoting complex is to uh, target some protein for the degradation which are that protein securin securin and cyclin okay so main function of this anaphase promoting complex is the transition of, from metaphase to anaphase by degrading some proteins like securin and cyclin okay so what will happen this anaphase promoting complex that will uh, complex with cdc20 or cdh1 and then it will ubiquitous or that will undergo uh, that will degrade securin securin okay securin is complex with another protein called the separase that is an enzyme okay so it will undergo ubiquitination of securin so what will happen this securin will get degrade and this separase that will get released that will get free and this separase will go uh, and degrade cohesin cohesin is the protein that binds sister chromatid together and 
if that this separates degrade cohesin then what will happen this sister chromatid can move to the opposite poles okay sister chromatid can move to opposite poles okay and another uh, function of this antigen uh, sorry anaphase promoting complex is the activated anaphase promoting complex that will degrade that will degrade what m cycline m cycline means cyclin b okay so inactivation of m cdk will happen m cdk means cdk1 and that will lead to the metaphase to anaphase transition okay so let's see the options here cyclin b1 is there yes this is correct here uh, cdk1 is there the um, here cdk1 is not undergoes degradation okay here an inactivation of cdk1 is happening because of the degradation of cyclin b that means m cyclin okay so this is not correct aurora a kinase aurora a kinase is not correct polo like kinase is not correct this aurora a kinase and polo like kinase are involved in early metaphase that is um, essential for the uh, proper um, uh, proper alignment of spindle fibers to chromosome okay so here the answer is cyclin b1 cyclin b1 will undergo degradation during metaphase to anaphase transition okay so option a is the correct answer so here i am winding up this lecture video and i will come with more questions in the next session but I need your support for that. For supporting me, you just click the like button given below if you find this video helpful. And also ensure that you have subscribed this channel. Keep learning. Thank you.